Lululemon, if you don't know, is known for their high quality, top tier, and very expensive athletic gear, especially for women. So when they came out with a sneaker that had claims of them scanning a million women feet to make it perfect for the woman foot with dual density outsoles and a bunch of other things, it really interested me because I, I was curious, if the, is this another example of a well-known brand that makes something other than footwear using their well-known brand to sell footwear that's subpar? So we're gonna cut it in half, run it through our test to really see if this is a big L for Lululemon or if it's actually a pretty decent sneaker. So now let's go over the history of Lululemon because it's kind of a interesting history. So it all started in 1998 in Vancouver when Chip Wilson started Lululemon. And by 2000, they, their first Lululemon store was opened. And by 2004, Chip Wilson in an interview um, he wanted as he, he mentioned that he wanted as many L's in the name of Lululemon to make it sound as Western as possible so that the Japanese markets and the other Asian markets would have a hard time saying the name, which is pretty wild, but very on par for 2004. And then 2007, Lululemon went public with an IPO of 327 million, selling 18 million shares. 2012, Lulu filed a lawsuit against Calvin Klein for making pants that were too similar to their own and infringing on three of their patents. 2013, Lulu made the third consecutive appearance on Forbes' fastest growing company, so they're really starting to skyrocket at this point. And also in 2013, Chip Wilson, the, the founder, remarked on a, Bloomberg, on a Bloomberg TV episode, I guess, that some women's bodies are not meant for our clothing, which caused a lot of controversy. And also because of that, in 2013, Chip Wilson stepped down as CEO after that happened and then 2014 after chip left the, the the company they opened their first store in europe and also that same year chip resigned from the board of directors after saying lulu had lost its way and lost a lot of its market share to nike and adidas in 2015 i thought it was worth mentioning they ventured into more of the men's wear with an anti-ball crushing pants for men and i have a couple of their shorts for working out they're fine they're really expensive for just fine workout pants or shorts but 2019 they, they doubled down on their menswear market by starting marketing campaigns to raise awareness about their brand and, and trying to get away from this this female lululemon brand and bring men into the fold and then in 2020 they bought mirror an interactive mirror with a camera and speakers designed for at-home workouts for 500 million dollars in 2022 this year lulu launches its first footwear line with four different silhouettes the strong fill, the bliss fill, the rest fill, and the charge fill, which is this one right here. So now you know a little bit of the interesting uh, history of Lululemon. And so now I'll start dissecting this thing and, and going through all the details. And this shoe has no leather in it. So hopefully this will be an under 10 minute video because we've been doing a lot of long videos lately. But this upper is a woven, uh, some sort of synthetic material upper because we burned it to see how it reacted and it melted and fizzled so it's clearly synthetic and it has these TPU overlays that combine a couple different pieces together and give it allegedly some more durability and they also have this foam counter on the outside which is maybe the worst material you could put on the outside of a sneaker because foam just disintegrates over time so that was the, the worst thing they could put around the counter. But for a workout sneaker, I wanted to test to see if you wore a hole through the toe or on the side somewhere, if this type of knit is gonna completely unravel once you've got a little split in the, in the, in the, in the fabric. So we cut on this, the sock part around your ankle, cut that, it unraveled pretty easily, so you definitely don't wanna be abrading that too much. And then we also cut into the more midfoot area and that unraveled not quite as much as the sock part, but it still unraveled. So this is a shoe that if you're going to be working out you're going to be want you're going to want to take care of it because unlike some of the other sneakers we've, re we've reviewed that have a better weave that's more wear resistant, this one will come unraveled as soon as you start cutting through some of those fibers. And I wanted to do the eyelet test to see how strong these were. This little metal eyelet took 78 pounds to pull through and surprisingly the plastic eyelets took 120 pounds to pull through, which was really surprising. And then finally, just for fun, we wanted to stretch this over and over. So we did this 200 times to simulate 200 on and off, 200 donnings, I guess would be a better term and it definitely did stretch out. So you're just gonna wanna be careful if you get a pair of these that you're not overstretching them because you're gonna lose some of that form fit if you stretch it too much. So not looking good for Lululemon right off the bat, especially with that foam on the heel. It's a terrible idea. 
Um, if you have a pair of these, let me know if, if that's completely disintegrating on you. And part of their branding is that they say that you could spot clean with a damp rag, so we got a little mud on it. And as you can see, it's there's nothing special about this upper that makes it extra cleanable. It's just a regular upper with a little marketing spin on it. Next, if we move to the inside, so it is kind of lined. It looks like it's a two-piece like sock upper. But the one thing I do like about this is they have a it's almost like a felt, a really thin microfiber or felty feeling material as the heel counter it has those little little pads that are similar to the gps that lock your heel in so i do like that because i think that's a stronger abrasion more abrasion resistant material than just having the knit where, where your heel is going to slowly wear through that and if you look at the insole it's a it's a it's a pretty cheap insole there's really nothing special about this in any way it's just a closed celled foam insole nothing spectacular but this kind of brings us to one of the big claims that lulu has made about this shoe so they allegedly scanned a million, over a million women's feet to be able to design the shoe to fit a woman's foot more accurately because a lot of times women's shoes are based off of men's shoes and a lot of times with athletic shoes, they're more, they're, they're really pointy. They're not, they're not like a natural foot shape. And so I thought that this was going to be a very anatomical wide toe box sneaker for women but we compared it to a bunch of other insoles and it's basically the exact same. So for scanning a million feet, they really didn't make any changes at all to the shape of the shoe. So, and maybe part of that is maybe the, maybe the midsoles contoured like we saw in the GPS, but I put them on, it doesn't really feel like it. So we'll see really when we get it cut in half. And speaking of that midsole, you can see that this shoe is strobel stitched with just a typical non-woven lasting material with a foam midsole underneath. And they say it's a dual density midsole. And it's very, very rare that we actually see a brand that claims dual density that actually has dual density. Like nine times out of 10, these brands claim dual density and it's just a single slab of foam. And they usually do probably what's with this shoe where they, they dye the two different parts of the midsole, two different colors. So it looks like it's dual density, which in my opinion is really gross, false advertising. And maybe they get away with it by including the, the insole. So I'm not going to pass judgment quite yet before we cut this in half, but I'm willing to bet that this is not a dual density midsole. I bet it's just one solid slab of foam. So we'll see where we get that cut in half. And we did a durometer test on the outside of the midsole and both of them came in at a 30 shore A. So everything's pointing to it being a single density midsole. And we also did the ball drop test and compared to the other sneakers we've done, it did 15.6 inches of rebound, which is not quite as good as the rest on a, a, a small weight responsiveness. We also did the bar drop test and it was pretty on par with some of the other um, thick full foam sold running shoes that came in at an eight where the on clouds were around eight. The ultra boosts were just under eight and the zoom X were around six to seven. So pretty on par when it comes to that responsiveness. And then finally, the last thing to talk about is the outsole and it's just a rubber outsole that's infused into the foam midsole. Nothing too special, you know, it's articulating, it's flexible because it has those reliefs, but really nothing beyond what we've seen in basically every other running shoe that we've cut apart. So that's the basics. So let's cut this, let's cut this thing in half and see what's on the inside and see if we can bust Lululemon, do a little false advertising and line a little bit about their shoes. So let's cut them in half. Okay, we got it chopped in half, so let's see what's inside. Is it a dual density midsole? Nope, that is one single slab of foam dyed two different colors on the outside. So Lululemon, you busted. That's a single density outsole, you bunch of liars. Um, is the midsole contoured? No, it's not really contoured beyond what we've seen in other running shoes. 
It does have a little bit of a arch support, but really nothing that I would say is worth a million scans. Is so I don't I really think that million scans of women's feet to make just a very average looking narrow toe box sneaker. I think that's also a big L for Lululemon. You busted on that too, because that's not really special in any way. The inside is really, there's nothing really to talk about. It's just a big slab of foam with the rubber outsole kind of tacked on there, pretty thin rubber outsole. And that's about it. This very simple shoe. So it's really just a basic running shoe. It doesn't have unique foams. It doesn't have a unique contour, whatever. There's no gimmicks really to it. All the gimmicks that they do promote are all just BS fake marketing jargon like the dual density. And it is a little bit cheaper than like the Ultra Boost, the Zoom X, the uh, Cloud Monsters. So it is a little bit cheaper, but it's still $150 for a sock upper, a cheap insole, and then a single density foam midsole with rubber on the bottom. So I don't think it's egregiously overpriced or anything. It's more just Lululemon has done exactly what all the other brands do where they just lie to their consumers about what's on the inside of their shoe and over exaggerate certain things. Like if you really scanned a million women's feet, you wouldn't have a sneaker that's shaped exactly like everyone else's. So to the big question, is this an L for Lululemon? I think it is because Lululemon had an opportunity to really disrupt the market by coming in and making something different, doing a wider toe box or a contoured midsole or a true dual density outsole. Like they had an opportunity to do to do something different, but they didn't. And that was their one opportunity to distinguish themselves from Adidas and Nike and all these big brands, and they did not. And so for me, this is a big L for Lululemon. And just even just for the simple fact that they lied about the dual density midsole, that in and of itself is a big L for me. So I would personally stay away from these. I would just go with a more reputable brand like Nike, which is kind of a crazy thing to say when you know we talk so much garbage on Nike, but I would still would probably recommend getting Nikes over this because you're gonna get more real tech for your money and less BS, less emphasis on less BS garbage marketing. So. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Maybe I missed something. If you own a pair of these and you think I'm way off, let me know in the comments because maybe there's something about this that I just missed, but I highly doubt it. So let me know and thank you guys for your support. And let me know what other sneakers you want us to cut apart. And I really like doing the women's sneakers. We're, we're considering doing more women's sneakers in 2023. So if you like this, let me know. If you like these videos, support them. And thank you guys so much for all your support. It means a lot to me. So thank you. See ya.